Hey guys, Mr. Decker here. This is Unit 2, Lesson 11 of the Web Development course in Code.org. And this lesson is on styling elements with CSS. Now, we have a couple of computer science standards to go over, incorporating existing code, media, and libraries into original programs and giving attribution, and then documenting programs in order to make them easier to follow, test, and debug. We're going to be doing a lot of debugging on this one and a lot of testing of programs. So as the essential question for this lesson is, how can we style the images and layouts of our pages? Well, we have pictures we want to put on our websites, right? And we want to make decisions about where those pictures are located, the size of those pictures. Maybe we want to put borders around those pictures, adjust the thickness of those borders, so on and so forth. Well, we can use Cascading Style Sheets, or CSS, to manage that on our website. So let's get into this. Uh, make sure you're watching this video and following best practices as normal. When you're finished with the lesson on code.org, I want you to come back here to the assignment page and follow these instructions for answering the essential question. Remember, the essential question is, how can we style the images and layouts of our pages? So you'll do that with a text box entry and make sure you're answering that with two to three sentences. I'll remind you again at the end of this video. All right, so let's jump in, bubble one. At this point, you should be able to navigate to this page without me showing you how. You've been using code.org now uh, for a while, the entire school year. So we should be able to do this without needing to have our hands held. So let's go over our new code that we're going to be learning today. So uh, width value, margin, height, border width, border style, border color, border radius, background color, and float. Notice that all of these different pieces of code have a value that goes with them. So let's get into this. Level two, we've got some sample websites to look at. Let's click the websites below to discover some new types of styling for our pages. When we click it, it'll open up on the same page. To navigate back to where we were, we just click back just like that in our browser. So let's go to sample one. In sample one, we can see all of the HTML code, of which there is quite a bit. They've written, goodness, uh, you know, about 40 lines of code here. And in doing so, they've got the structure of their website. And it looks like they've got a few images here, you can see. And it looks like they've got a border around them. Here's JFK, Martin Luther King. This is a pretty cool website. It's all about history, right? American history. And then we've got our style sheet, our index.html sheet. Remember, the HTML code gives your website structure, decides, you know, like up here, this part of their website is decided on line seven in their code, Andrew's reading list of great speeches. That's what it says up there, and it's an H1 tag. Bless me. Goodness gracious. All right. All right. And then uh, over on the style sheet, we can see their H1 tag rule set is making the decision on the color there, making it violet. So let's take a look here. What did it want us to uh, look at specifically or diagnose? Click the website, discover the ways that it's styled. Okay, yeah. Let's take a look at the style sheet because that's where everything gets styled. So the background color is bisque. So you can see they've made a body rule set, which is interesting. The body controls the background. So the background color is bisque. Very historical, kind of like it looks like a old paper, right? Okay, so P for paragraphs. So they're paragraphs. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. There's six, right? All of their paragraphs, uh, the font color is black, the font style is italic, and the font size is 24 pixels tall. Their H2 rule set, where they have I have a dream speech, DFK's inaugural address, and house divided speech, all of those are underlined, and the color is crimson. Their H3 rule set, which are, is these little headers, 
in here are just 10 pixels tall. No other uh, changes made to it in terms of font uh, style or anything like that. Their H1 rule set is just blue violet. And then their images, they've used a float left. So that makes their images appear over here with the text kind of wrapped around them. The pixel height, 100 pixels. So each of these images are all the same size and 100 pixels tall. This one is skinnier, but it's still the same height as the other two. Um, the margins are 10 pixels thick. You can see the margin that comes around. Them. That means that there's going to be 10 pixels between the image and anything that's around it, making sure that nothing is overlapping or getting too close to them. The border color is cadet blue. You can see the border. The border width is four pixels. The border style is solid, and the border radius is 10 pixels itself. So very cool. That is really, really, really cool. All right. Let's head back. Let's look at help save the bees. And this time, we'll just go directly to the style sheet. Remember, when you're linking your style sheets, you've got to link them between the two head tags. And you use that link, rel equals style sheet, href style.css, right? Let's go to the style sheet. So our paragraphs, the color for the text is yellow, and the font size is 22. Our background is black. Our H1 rule set says that the text will be yellow, 60 pixels tall, and center aligned. Oop, and look at that. There's an error in this code. Can you point that out? Do you know what it is? They forgot to put a uh, semicolon right there. All right. But it appears that everything seems to be working despite that. Interesting. All right. Height, 235 pixels for this image. They've got the image rule set. Oop. Control Z. Um, the image rule set is just IMG, right? Border style, inset. Border width, six pixels, yellow for the border color, and the border radius is 15 pixels. Color for their H5 uh, right there, where you have their attribution for uh, giving credit to where they got their information down here and where they found their picture of the bee. Let's look at the next one. Sample three, zebras. Zebroids, sorry, my goodness, my apologies. Looks like they've got a whole bunch of pictures. You can see all the code that they've, they're using to put their pictures in here. And it looks like they don't even have a style sheet. Oh, yeah, they do. Goodness, all right. Oh, cool. This is a really neat, they've done a good job with this. Okay, so their paragraphs. The color of the font is black, the font size is 16 pixels, and the background color is azure. So this very, very light blue. And that's that creating that background color, separating out sections of their website. That I like the way they did that. Their H1 tag up here where it says zebroids, it, the font weight is bold and underlined. And then their images are 90 pixels tall each or the border radius, I'm sorry, 90 pixels, and then the border style is a ridge. Cool. So I'm assuming this is all one picture. Let's go, I wanna go back to the HTML page and click on this. So this is different types of animals, zonky. Let me look at their pictures. They've got that one, types. OK, yeah, so the types image, that's this one. And you can see they got it to round off. That's cool. So back to the style sheet. Um, they've got a list, looks like. And then their image, list. Where's the list showing up? Anywho, h3 tag. H2 tag body. So you can see that every part of their, uh, or all of the elements 
on their website have its have their own rule set. So really cool. I like these sample websites. They get, are really good examples for what you can accomplish using the uh, web tools in here. All right. So here, this icon means that this level is part of a larger project. Changes will be saved across these levels. All right. So layout and style. Look through web page below for new styles. Open this style sheet. All right. So let's open the style sheet. And it says, uh, figure out which parts of the CSS code you think are making the page appear different. What makes the entire page blue? So here's our part that's making the entire page blue. Inside the body uh, rule set, remember the body, the rule sets are defined. And then the rules exist within the curly braces. And our background color is light blue. And you can look over here and see, yes, indeed, it is light blue. OK. And how are the images positioned to the left of all the other elements? Well, here's our image rule set down here on line 13. And we can see that they've used float and left. So that's how they got all of their images to be on the left side of the text. And anything else we need to do? In the next few levels, you'll be changing and adding new styles on this page. OK, so nothing else we need to do. Let's read here. What does the property float do? The float property makes an element float, meaning that the elements that come after it all float around it. If the float value is left, the element will float to the left, and the elements after it will show up on its right. If the float value is right, the element will float to the right, and the elements after it will show up on its left. You can read more about this property at W3Schools float property. Cool. All right. Finish. We're on bubble four already. Moving quickly. How much time have we come in here? Just 12 minutes. Cool. All right, background color. Find the code in the style sheet that is making the background of the entire page light blue. So let's go to the style sheet. Here's the light blue background. Change the code to make the page a different color. Try to change the background color of just the paragraphs. Of just the paragraphs. Where's the P? Down here, OK. All right, let's make the page a different color. So background color, and we'll make it antique white. That looks good. And then let's change the background color to the paragraphs. One second. All right, sorry about that. So the next thing we wanted to do is Try to change the background color of just the paragraphs. So let's go down to our paragraph rule set, put our cursor at the end of line 26, hit Enter. And then let's make a background color rule for these. Let's try maybe Azure. Semicolon. There we go. And so now our paragraph text has its own background color throughout the page. Pretty cool. All right. Let's finish. And we're on bubble five. In bubble five, it says, find the body rule set in the style sheet. So let's go to the style sheet. Here's the body rule set on line one. And it says, uh, Find out what you think will happen if you add text align, color, or other text properties to the body rule set. Try out some different properties to check your guesses. Well, let's see. Let's put that apostrophe or er, semicolon there. Let's add some new stuff. So text align. Uh, let's try inherit. See what that does. Didn't really do anything. Let's see what text align. Um, left does. Mm, that didn't do much. 
text align, whoop, colon, uh, justify, did that do anything? Not that I see. I'm not seeing it do much. I don't know about you guys. So let's go ahead and put a semicolon there. Let's try a new one. Uh, color, colon, change the color of the text to, let's see what aqua looks like. Whoa. So that changes the color of all of the text. Oh, I see. Okay, now I see what justify is doing. All right, I, that hurts my eyes. I got to change that. Color, let's change it to... Um, maybe chocolate. Mm, too close to the background color. Let's try... Just blue. There, that kind of... That stands out pretty well. All right, so this justify, that's changing the location of this at least. So if I text align center... There we go. Now it's making a big difference in where stuff is located. All right. Cool. Um, all right. Let's move on. Bubble six. One second. All right. We're back. When you're the tech guy in the building, a lot of teachers come to get help from you. All right. So it says, look at the float property inside your image rule set. So let's go to the style sheet. And the image rule set, let's see, where is it? Oh, okay. Starting on line 15, it looks like it's already got a lot of rules in it. Um, let's see. Uh, figure out what you think the property does. Well, it's, you know, float left. Uh, with 250 pixels, so it's making every picture on here 250 pixels wide. The margin is 10 pixels, so nothing will be within 10 pixels of it. Border color, saddle brown. You can see the border color. Let's, okay, so anyway, look at the float property. Change the value from left to right. So uh, since, they're a lot, since they're all left, if we change it to right, uh, they should all move over to the right side of the text where they're located up and down the page. So let's just type, let's backspace here and write. And we were right. And now all of the text is on the left side because the float property for the images is right. Okay, finish. Bubble seven, moving right along. Find the property in the style sheet that controls the width of the images. So let's go directly to the style sheet. Let's find the image rule set. And here's the width right here. Width, 250 pixels wide. Okay. Change the width of the images to be larger or smaller. So let's see what 350 does. Makes them a lot bigger. Uh, let's see what 150 does, because it was 250 originally. All right. Uh, and, uh, okay, so we've learned that, you know, making that number bigger makes the picture bigger. Making that number smaller makes the picture smaller. Uh, so let's see. Create a new rule with a height property. Control the height of the images. Okay. So let's put our cursor at the end of line 17 there. Enter down and HEI, select height from the drop down. And then let's say our height should be 125 px, semicolon. And that makes sure that all of the pictures now are 125 pixels tall and 150 pixels wide. Let's try 200 here width. Keep that 125 because I think that looks pretty good and it makes everything line up nicely because like here's the Ras Malai, here's the Benafi Pai, here's the Brigadero, and here's the Tanguan. I hope I didn't butcher those uh, the way I pronounced those too badly. 
All right. Use the width property in the P rule set, the paragraph rule set, to change the width of your paragraphs. All right. Because, yeah, they are kind of wide, aren't they? They stretch from side to side. So let's change the width of our paragraphs. So I'm going to put my cursor at the end of line 30 there after my background color rule. Hit my Enter key to create a blank line 31 in the code. And I'm going to do a width property. And I'm going to say, let's try 500 pick PX. What did that do? That doesn't seem like it did much, did it? Let's try 250. Okay, now we see a big difference. I don't like 250 very much. Let's try 400. That looks pretty good. We'll go with that. All right. We've done everything there. Finish. We're on bubble eight. Oh, we've got lots of practice to do. Let's see a time already. We're already 21 minutes in. Let's do some stuff. So debug some images. Figure out why the images are not the correct height and debug this page. Okay. These images are all supposed to be 100 pixels high, but the height property is not working. Find the bug and make all, all the images the same height. All right. Interesting stuff. So let's go to the style sheet. Image rule set. Ah, I already see the problem. See, height 100, but they forgot to put in the PX. There it goes. That fixes all of that. Let's finish. Let's do B together, debug the style, figure out why the images are not the correct height, and debug this page. Okay. None of the styles are working for this page. Debug the code, then change the styles to something you like. Image. Let's go to the style page. So the images float right. Let's see. None of the styles are working. Oh, I wonder. If on our HTML page they didn't do the link correctly. Hmm. Style sheet, style.css. Yeah, because they've got a bunch of background color light blue. They've got a lot of rules here. Let's go back to the index page. I'm going to retype out their link and see if I can fix it. Link. Um, REL equals quotation mark style sheet. What happened? Style sheet. Space. href equals style.css, close it. There we go. So yeah, their link to the style sheet was broken. So we got that working again. So that's important. You always got to make sure your link to the style sheet is working properly. So let's finish and debug the heading. Figure out what's wrong with the code, even though the preview looks like it is correct. All right. The preview for this page looks fine, and all of the HTML and CSS elements are being displayed correctly. But if you look in the code, something isn't quite right that could cause problems later on. Can you spot what code is in the wrong area and fix it? All right, so style sheet, body, color lavender, background black. Let's see. So I don't see an H1. Here's the H1 tag. So in the style sheet, someone quite right, causing problems later on. Can you spot what's wrong in the code? In the wrong area and fix it. 
A, color lavender. What's A? Maybe that's supposed to be H1? Hmm. Back to our index page. Ah, okay, I see. So some of this code right here, control C, it's in the wrong spot. It's between the head tags and it should be in the body right here. Now let's change the spec, whoop, change the spec to A like it was. So that was an issue. Things were displaying correctly, but you know, like if they put any links to other websites in here, those wouldn't work because they had that up in the head tag. So let's finish. And D, add new rules. The rules for the body right now are not very exciting. Add some more to make it look cool. You can also add or change other rules, okay? So it's not very exciting. Add some more rules to make it cool. So let's go here. So the body, let's make the background color. Um, let's make the background color like a light green maybe? Dark sea green? Ooh, yeah, I like that. Okay, we, all, we do only have one picture in here. Let's see, back to the style sheet. So our H6 tag, all right, let's make our image float left. And let's also add a border to it. Or wait, how do you do that? Let's go open this up, control C, control V, enter. And then I want to exit that, go to exploration, I think is where we were when we were learning what the different things are. Yeah, this one has a border around it. So let's go there, go to the image rule set. Uh, let's see, border color. Order style. Okay. So, whoop. Whenever that happens to you, just refresh. Style sheet. Image border color. Uh, border dash color. Uh, let's do something nice. Maybe brown with the green would look good. And then border width, I think. Border width, yep. Uh, maybe 5px. Why isn't that showing up? Let me look at another, let's go look at these sample websites. How did they get their border for this to show up? Border style maybe? So let's add a border style. Uh, inset. There we go. Uh, I like it. And I want to make this bigger. So let's do 400. Yeah. And I think that's fine. Uh, what were the instructions again? Rules for the body are not very exciting. Add some more. All right, so we're adding more rules for the body. So let's say um, 
text. What other kind of rules can you add for the body? Font size. Let's go back and see what other rules for the body they have in here for different stuff. Style, background color, the zebroids. Font family, ooh, yeah. Let's add a font family for everything. For all of it. Whoop, keep going all over the place here. Font family. Um, ooh, that's a problem. Font family. And let's do serif. That doesn't make any changes. Let's try a different font family. Cursive. That looks good. Um, what else can we do to the whole body of it? Text align. Center. Yeah, that looks good. I like it. All right, I'm I'm satisfied with doing that much. Finish. All right, E, fix image width. Fix the issue with the images being different sizes from each other. We can do that. Let's go to the style sheet. So, yeah, you can see some of these images are gigantic. It looks like they've got some really good images. So let's go down here, add an image width. And let's do like 300 px. Maybe they need to be a little bigger than that. Or smaller even. Uh, maybe 150? Or I kind of like how they're... Sh uh, how they did that, um, 200 px. I think 150 is best because that, I think that's the style they were going for there. All right, finish. And fix image position. Make it so the images are next to the text. All right. Okay, so we're going to float the images, I guess. Style sheet. There we go. Float left, and now they're next to the text. Very good. Finish. And I think that's all of them, and we're ready to move on to bubble nine. Now that you've seen some different ways to style, it's time to try it out yourself. Here's a web page you've seen before, but it needs some style. Give the web page a background color. All right, let's go to the style sheet. Oh, wow, there's nothing on the style sheet. All right, so, um, or body, sorry. Brace, curly brace, and curly brace, and Background color, aqua, yeah. That's a little bright for me. Maybe aquamarine, yeah, I like that better. Semicolon. All right, make all the images go to the right of the page. All right, so let's make an image rule set. IMG, space, open curly brace, close curly brace. And we're gonna do float. And it said to the right. There you go. And then make all of the text a different color. So we've got, let's see. Let's do a paragraph rule set. Um, let's see. 
blue. And then for the H1 tag up there, to change that color. Oh, you know what? We can change all of the text to a different color by doing this. Text. Um, text color. Oops. Let's go back to here and see font family. Let's see. Maybe they did it with this one. Style sheet, color yellow. So just color does it. Okay. I don't have to type in text, just color. Let's make it all blue violet. And then my paragraphs are blue. Oh, I think that looks good. Oop. Keep forgetting to put semicolons in places, guys. There we go. Um all right, and add any other style we want. I think I'm happy with that. Although, I kind of want to add h1 rule set to underline text decoration. Underline. There we go. That looks good. So now that's underlined, and I think that looks cool. And I'm going to make it bigger as well. So um, text size. or font size. I keep wanting to put text. Font size, let's do 60px. Yeah, much better. Okay, cool. And finish. All right, bubble 10. I think I did, was that everything for nine? Yes, okay. Bubble 10, we've got some challenges to do. Try the extra challenges to learn some new code. All right, extra code, create borders. Create borders around the elements on your page. We learned how to do that a little earlier, didn't we? Find the rules in the style sheet that set the image borders color and width. Image color right there and the width Border width right there. All right. Um, change the color and width of your borders. So let's change the color from saddle brown to something else. For your color, uh, maybe what will stand out? Coral could look pretty good. Let's see, ooh, dark orchid. Yeah, that looks, that looks nice. All right, and then let's make them a little thicker, six pixels instead of four. Yeah, that makes them stand out really nice. All right, try out some different border styles. So here's border style and it's right now it's set to solid. So let's see what we've got, border style dotted. <laughs> All right, and what else you got? Double, semicolon. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, there's lots of different options for that. You can see what they do. Groove. I'm gonna leave it at groove for now. And put a border on another type of page element, such as one of the headings or the paragraphs. So let's go up to the H1 tag and try to do a uh, border style. Border style. Groove will be consistent. Yeah, and then Desserts of the World now has a border around it. Okay. Finish. Extra code, rounded corners. Make the corners of your images rounded. Okay. Back to my style sheet. 
images. Okay. Look at the border radius property inside your image rule set. Here's border radius. This and figure out what you think the property does. So let's change 10 pixels to 20 pixels and see what happens. Oh, okay, so it rounds that even more. Let's say 40. Rounds it even more. Let's see, 100. Oh, cool. It basically makes it into ovals, and that looks neat. And then try different values and decide which one you like best. I like these ovals. I think that looks neat. So I'll leave it. All right. Extra code background image dot URL. Learn how to add background images using a URL. Okay. The background of an element can be set to any image that you would like, just like when inserting a photo. You can use the image's URL name. Find the property in the style sheet that controls the background image. So style sheet and change the image to one of your choice. Uh, find the background image, that's this. Change it to one of my choice. So we've got all those images. I guess it wants me to just find an image. Hold up. All right, we're back. So we're going to change in the style sheet this URL background. So right now it is set to this background cloud image. We're going to change that to something else. I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm just going to type in sci-fi like that. Go to images. Um, yeah, sure. Let's just be quick about it. I like this one. So right, cl right click, save image as. Sci-fi. Um, back. Save. And then I'm going to go back to my web lab project. And then I'm going to add an image, upload file, go into my pictures. Here it is. Open. Now it's added, so I can click the X. It'll refresh and upload. I need to refresh. So the code shows up again. And in my style sheet, as you see in the body rule set, I've got this background cloud URL. So I'm just going to backspace that URL, click this, and it gives me the options. Here's my sci-fi image. And now my background for my website is that sci-fi image that I picked. Pretty cool, right? All right, so that's how that works. Finish. And E, challenge, animal web page. Complete this challenge that asks you to style a web page about animals. Basic web page about endangered animal species has been provided for you. Complete these challenges to add style to it. You know what? I think we've uh, made it far enough. I am going to allow you to continue from here. Uh, the first thing you need to do on this one is create a style sheet. So you want to click Add CSS, and then you right-click Rename Style.CSS. Oh, okay, reload page, reload. That's okay, that's okay. So let me try that again. Add CSS. In one CSS, let me go back to my index page. Style.css, there is no style sheet. Rename, style, enter. There we go. Now we've got a style sheet. So, and it's already linked. Now, when you're doing this challenge, you can go through, make these uh, changes to everything that's in there that it tells you to do. Back to it. Uh, and then work on the dessert web page as well. Uh, and I think that will be worthy challenges for you to be able to show off the skills that you've learned so far. And 
Don't forget to come back here and answer the essential question following these instructions down here. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. We're really starting to learn a lot about how we can style our web pages, and uh, we're getting closer and closer to being able to really add a lot to the web pages we're making ourselves. I hope you're having a good time with it and learning as you go.